Thinking, thinking, thinking. Setting up. Oh, I don't have to consent. Yeah. That's new. What if I don't want to? Bill, have you consented? I just consented, yeah. Oh, there we are. So we are. What else am I going to do tonight? Yeah, you got nothing to do. I mean, he so didn't complete his model railroad, did he? Yeah, right. I had two days off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, now all that's left is obsessions. Mm -hmm. I can't do that or I'm going to get fired. So. <laughs> all right. Uh, people are starting to log on now. So we'll get started in just a sec. Make sure we got Bobby on the other end here. Our master wizard behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. All right, well, 701, I guess it's time to get started. Um, so good evening, everybody. This is our first uh, Rapido Facebook Live in a while now. I guess the last one was in July. It's been a couple okay. months. It has. Oh. So we didn't do an August one uh, last month, but I normally do once a month. But we uh, we have uh, we have some pretty interesting new uh, new HO models to talk about today. We sent the newsletter out oh, what five o'clock, a couple hours ago now. Um, yep. If you haven't already seen the newsletter, go and uh, check uh, check your email box. They should be in there now. So uh, it's we've got Bill Schneider, Josh Vandercheck, and uh, myself, Jordan. Uh, Jason was originally going to be here tonight. Unfortunately, he had uh, a family a uh, death in the family and couldn't join us. So. Uh, we're thinking about uh, him and the family tonight for that. So uh, I guess so we could get uh, get right into it. Um, so we've got three big launches today. We've got our all-new uh, Alco FA1s and FB1s. We have the Bud Slumber Coaches uh, in HO scale, as well as the UTLX X3 tank cars, also in HO. So uh, we're going to be going over those. We've got uh, lots of other stuff to show. We've we had actually a ton of new pre-production samples for various projects show up last week. We've got, uh, think about what, 15 different projects in shipping right now on the way from the factory. We're gonna be talking about that and uh, taking your questions uh, kind of throughout. So I guess on that, uh, let's start with the FAs and uh, FBs. That sounds probably like a good idea. So let me uh, get that shared on the screen here. Just bear with me, and uh, I think on that we'll uh, we'll let Bill take that one away. There we go. There you. There we go. Okay. All right. So yeah, this is the newest um, Alco uh, locomotive that we're doing in HO scale. It's we seem to be on a bit of an Alco kick, and uh, we're all kind of Alco fans, I think. Um, we, when we did the FA2 a while back, it was a very well-received project, but a lot of people were emailing us with, why don't you do the FA1? And uh, I think that makes a lot of sense because there were a lot of railroads that owned these and they were used in, uh, in freight service primarily for uh, many years through the, through the 50s and 60s and just to, some classic locomotives. You want to scroll down a bit, Jordan? We can show them some of the road names we're doing, and then I'll, I'll like maybe share some of the CAD files and show you what we're doing. Excellent, there yep. we go. So uh, we are doing both uh, US and Canadian roads. Well, we're doing A and B units with the exception of Canadian National that actually never ordered any B units. So they're just out on their own on the A units. Um, Canadian Pacific, we are doing the, uh, the block, the script and we're saving the multi marks for later as well as in the multi, multi marks for, for group two there are dozens of paint schemes to do on these so there will yes. be okay. quite quite a few in, in the, the second release and the third release and so forth so if you don't see your favorite railroad don't panic we haven't forgotten it. yeah, yeah. it's uh, um, it's always uh, it's always a hard call uh, we get that message a lot uh, <laughs> why didn't you do this railroad why didn't you do that railroad what's wrong with you you didn't do my favorite railroad uh, we just we can't do every railroad, uh, especially with a locomotive like this, where there were dozens and dozens of paint schemes and road names. Uh, it's it's just hard to do that. We learned the hard way with the SW twelve uh, hundred. Don't do twenty different road names in one release. It's uh, it's too difficult. So absolutely, we've got roads like Canadian Pacific and, and uh, New Haven and and so forth that had four different paint schemes within the on the same railroad. So exactly, there's too much to do at once. Uh, so we are doing the Erie. We're doing the Erie in the delivery scheme. 
Um, but for people that actually want to do some modeling, we're going to include the grab irons and the nose MU receptacles and so forth so that they can uh, modernize a little bit to the, as they looked in the uh, later 50s and 60s. So those will be in the parts bag. And did these, uh, the, did these last into the uh, EL era? I believe a few of them did early into EL. I'm not sure if they got painted EL or not, but that could be a second artist. Mm -hmm. I think some of them got the simplified, just the EL diamond, but I'm not sure about the full gray. And somebody's going to chime in right now and tell me which units, and that'll be great. I'll make a note. Um, the FA one we're also doing in Great Northern, uh, both in uh, A's and, and AB sets. Uh, personal favorite of mine is uh, Lehigh, New England, just to me is a really classy paint scheme. So we're offering uh, L and N E. And it's a railroad you don't see a lot of models uh, kind of available for it that often. So. No, it, it's a railroad that, that was uh, predominantly, if not all, outgo powered. And uh, this is the first locomotive that we've done that is correct for them. They only had a few different uh, styles of diesels. So, um, and it, it's another railroad that has a very devoted following, and uh, a lot of people just buy it because it, it's neat. So, mm -hmm. uh, hoping this one works. Uh, New Haven, we're doing the 1947 as delivered, uh, the orange scheme, which. Uh, to me is I, I think one of the neatest ones, even though it, it only lasted a few years. And then the McGinnis uh, scheme, which would come late, late 50s, early 60s. Uh, so we've got both of those. New Haven, again, you've got four different paint schemes. So wait for round two if you don't see your favorite here. Um, Pensy, Pensy is actually easy because they only had one paint scheme on these. So we've got those in the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, and the train Redding, phone antennas, of course. With the train phone antennas and uh, Several other unique details that uh, the Pensy had. Of course, they, they couldn't do things quite the same way as everybody else. Uh, so much for the standard railroad of the world, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. The Reading, um, of course, uh, goes with our Northeastern Caboose very nicely, as does the L and N E. L -N -N -E. And then the Union Pacific, um, another one that we're doing a bunch of road specific details for as well. This is also an important one for uh, Canadian modelers too, especially in uh, uh, if you're modeling with CP in the early 60s, CP leased a bunch of these off of the UP and ran them uh, for, for a couple of years there, I think. Um, yeah. And, then, and that was actually after UP had kind of retired them. I don't believe they went back to UP, as I recall. I think they were traded in and scrapped. But... It, it was very late for them. And but, yeah. I was surprised that some of the best UP photos that I found early on were actually taken in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So CP ran them out of Toronto for, I think, like two years, like 63, 64, something like that. Um, yeah. yeah. So well, that's so how this project got going, is I convinced Jason he might need him for his layout. So we're all set. Uh, uh, just, did you tell him that he needs to model 1963 then? You just don't bring that up. Okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't mention it. I'll make sure he doesn't watch this. So. But uh, yeah, uh, this is a, it's a great, it's a great project. Lots, a lot of variety in, in, in paint schemes. Uh, we did the, uh, the Western UPs there and the Great Northern. So uh, a little bit of uh, something for everyone, pretty much. You want, I can share the, uh, the CAD with you here too, as well. Sure, I will, uh, I'll stop sharing and you can take over. Do so. Hopefully you can see that. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay, so this is the Pansy with the train phone antennas. Uh, but it does kind of show, being the CAD file, it shows in, in color a few of the things that you're doing as add-on parts. Dynamic brakes or non-dynamic brake hatch, we offer both. Um, the original uh, uh, water-cooled and then air-cooled turbos, I'm not sure which order they, they went in, but uh, two different uh, exhaust hatches, two different uh, grill styles for the back here, which is a photo-etched uh, brass part. Um, there's, there was two different styles of the uh, cross braces. Um, side screens are, of course, photo etched, and they are also tabbed into the sides so that they won't pop out, uh, which is a constant problem with some of the earlier ones. Yeah, we fixed um, that in the, uh, the second run. Uh, we adjusted that uh, design. Correct. Of FA2s, that is. Yep. Um, we're doing single and dual headlights um, on the front. We're doing the flat number boards like this, and then also the angled number boards, which uh, I can show you. This is a UP shell, so this has the angled number boards. Uh, UP also has the rain gutters above, uh, has extra handholds on the roof. Um, there's a cooling coil that the UP added to the roof up here uh, that we're including with this. 
Um, typical of, of the other Alcos that we've done, it, it does have a full underbody detail with all the extra pipes, uh, air lines and, and valves and so forth. Uh, the steam connector lines are coming off because this was a freight unit, but these are preliminary CAD drawings. There we go. Nice Several different horns. Nice Several to... different horns. Of... Sorry about that, Bill. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say it's nice to see the uh, the two different versions of the uh, the number boards. Um, CP also had a batch, a very early batch of FAs that had the uh, the, the earlier style, the, the the straight style number boards, which we could do in the future yep. as well. And there were actually two different straight style number boards. One had kind of rounded corners, and one had squared off corners. And uh, so we're doing the rounded one in this batch, but uh, if we do a road in the next batch that needs the other ones, we'll probably include those as well. All right, excellent. Um, that's good. That's a good project. It'd be interesting to see uh, see uh, how that does. But I think it'll do pretty well. Um, so uh, why don't we just take a quick uh, quick break and go look at uh, some questions here. Sure. We'll ask her, we will have one or two questions and we'll go back to the uh, the slumber coach next. Um, one might kind of be for Josh. Do we have uh, uh, an F-59 production update? Um, as far as I know, they're well advanced in production. Uh, we're just going over final artworks right now for the uh, box design mm -hmm. and as well as instructions, which is, that's always a good sign when the factory's asking for that. That means they're, they're well along with with getting the product ready. Excellent. And what do we think for a delivery kind of late this year, early next year? Uh, it depends on shipping. I mean, it could get here next year. It could get here in 2030. We don't know yet. Exactly. It could, even if the factory, uh, like, like we've, uh, you'll, you'll see kind of an update that Jason put in our newsletter today. Um, the shipment could leave the factory on January 1st and not get here until March. Uh, that's just the way things have been going the last little while. Uh, so we're, it's, it's not just us, it's kind of everybody's at kind of the mercy of the uh, the, uh, the the shipping slowdown right now. So. Actually, three months would be a good travel time right now. Mm -hmm. But we've got stuff pushing four and five months now. So shipping's turning into a black hole of product for us, unfortunately. Yes, yes, exactly. Let's see here. And... Uh, we have an update on the RS18U. Um, they're, they're coming along. There was a lot of tooling updates that, uh, that uh, Dan Darnell has been, been working on with the factory. Um, so that's, uh, that's in the pro and kind of in the works right now. We're waiting to see some new samples. And we were hoping to shut that down or not shut it down, but uh, close out the, uh, that, that project and put it into production before the end of the year. So we're kind of just waiting to see what those new samples look like. So. Hopefully before too long, uh, we'll have an update on that. So uh, on that note, I guess, uh, let's talk about the slumber coaches. Let me just bring that up on the screen here. Still got the FA up. There we go. Oh, look at that, it's my favorite Amtrak scheme too. It is, mine too. I'm waiting for the attacks. Should be in about, oh, 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, so the HO Skills uh, Bud Slumber Coach, um, this carries on from our tradition of very high detailed, high quality Bud cars that started with uh, CP's Canadian back when we made it back in the early 2010s. Uh, and more recently, we've done the, um, the Bud Mid-Trade Dome car. Uh, so the Slumber Coach, uh, for anyone not familiar with them, uh, there were only 18 cars built in total, uh, and they were all built between 1956 and 1959. Um, the earliest examples ran on the, is it the Denver Zephyr? Uh, it was, yeah, and the, uh, the CB&Q bought the first four cars, which were pretty much, internally they were very similar, but externally they had a lot of differences on them. Yeah, they had the full skirting, uh, different trucks. Um, yeah, they were, they were a bit of a different animal. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on, other companies decided to get in on slumber coaches, and so... CB&Q had uh, four cars. Um, after those initial four were built, Baltimore and Ohio bought five cars. Uh, Missouri Pacific had one. Uh, New York Central got four cars and Northern Pacific got four cars. So mm -hmm. the fleets were rather small, but they were such a distinct and well-known and visually different car that you could find them almost anywhere. Um, Pullman had something that was very similar. Uh, theirs, I think, had more roomettes, but it followed the same principle of the stepped windows. 
Mm -hmm. um, and they were so, kind yeah. of similar to the, uh, is, how, how does that compare to the I-Series cars that, uh, that, that CN had? So CN had uh, a very similar car with the stepped windows, but there were no problem. There were no full bedrooms. It was all roomettes. So you had stepped windows, the full length of the car, the cars that CN had were also very similar to something that Santa Fe uh, also had built. Um, the two, the two details that I know of between those uh, Santa Fe's cars ran on, uh, ran on four axles, uh, but CN's cars, because they were an earlier lightweight, they ran on six. Mm -hmm. So, but not the same car, not a bud. Yeah, exactly. So. I'm going to scroll down here. We can see some of the paint schemes. Of course, there's the uh, North Coast Limited kind of in its, I guess that would have been during the, uh, the BN days when you had all the uh, Great Northern cars in there. Or was yeah. that when the train, the, for a while the train was actually uh, uh, combined, I think, with the Empire Builder. That was right near the end there. Yeah. But even just with this photo, you can see how distinct those slumber coaches were because they were the, yeah. some of the only fluted stainless steel cars that NP had. Mm -hmm. So they always stood out. Yep, the only cars in the entire train at the time that were, were unpainted, because even yep. the rest of their bud cars had the full uh, full two tone green. Yep. There yeah. you can see the uh, the Burlington Northern uh, car. There was actually we've been able to find pictures of two BN cars uh, with different numbers. Um, most of the other cars, so BN basically got all of the Northern Pacific cars, which came from various sources themselves, um, but. Uh, even into the Amtrak era, into like 74, 75, you could still see the NP painted and lettered cars uh, running uh, in various services around the U.S. Yep. The, uh, what's interesting is that photo, the BN car, the larger version of that photo off to the right, the next car is a Great Northern uh, Big Sky Blue car. Yep. yep. So it made for a rather colorful train. Yep. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Empire Builder and the North Coast at the time were, were very, uh, very typical of the rainbow consists of the, uh, of the early 70s. Yep. We'll have a look at the different road names. Yeah, so we're offering uh, for most, for a lot of the paint schemes, we're offering four names. Uh, in the case of Baltimore and Ohio, we're offering all five. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Amtrak Phase 1, uh, Amtrak Phase 3, which were the later uh, rebuilt ones. Um, we've got Burlington Northern, the two cars that we've uh, found photos of. Uh, oddly enough, one was, one still carries its original NP number, the other one uh, was renumbered into some Burlington Northern scheme that it's just kind of by itself on that one. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, one of the interesting ones, you know, um, the CB and Q NP. So uh, later on, when Northern Pacific got a bunch of secondhand cars, uh, namely the Northern Pacifics and Missouri Pacific cars, they, I believe it was a lease transfer to mm -hmm. CB and Q for use on one of the trains. I can't remember which one exactly. Um, but what they did was they left the Northern Pacific lettering on the car entirely, but they changed one of the Pullman name boards to read CB and Q. So I can actually pull that up there. You can see yeah. it's got the CB and Q. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, right, right by the vestibule there. Yeah. But, but only, the, only that one board beside the door on both sides. The other one kept Pullman, yeah. which I thought was rather interesting. <laughs> Um, and then we've got Missouri Pacific. It was the only one that had a silver painted underframe of mm -hmm. all the, of the 18 cars. And interestingly, this car was, uh, was purchased to kind of, uh, be included in that, in the, um, I believe it was the national limited in the Columbia that they jointly ran with the BNL. So the BNL cars, uh, were, were purchased for the same operation. And then, uh, in 64, they all went to NP when the leases were done. Yep. Um, we've got New York Central, uh, which branded their cars as sleeper coaches, not slumber coaches. Yep. So we'll have that correct lettering beside the car number board. And again, those were uh, those all went to NP in '64. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the regular uh, Northern Pacific. Mm -hmm. And for anyone doing a custom road, uh, I've already seen a couple of comments of people saying that CP almost ended up with some of these. Uh, well, now's your chance. You can decorate one up for Canadian Pacific if you like, or your own freelance road. Yep. Yep. Just slap some uh, decals on there if you want. And uh, you get every different number board. So there's all kinds of every different size of number board name board. They all come with this car. Yeah. You'll get, uh, you'll get blank name boards uh, for the middle of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll get a couple of the painted uh, Pullman boards. And you'll also get the Slumber Coach 
painted board with the uh, with the car number board as well. Mm -hmm. so and that way it's, makes, sorry, go ahead. That way it saves you on decaling some some elements of it. Yep. Uh, of course, we do have full interiors, uh, full lit interiors, SMDs throughout uh, to provide uh, kind of even uh, clear lighting and uh, the kind of repeat signature full underbody detail. So we've included every every detail part that we could possibly fit into these cars. Yeah. So anyone that has uh, some of our previous uh, Bud cars, um, the same details carry over to these full underbody detail. Uh, separately applied grabs, uh, sprung diaphragms, uh, our unique stainless steel finish. Um, the trucks have also been updated too, as these are slightly different from the ones that uh, we've made in the past. These are uh, GSC castings. Mm -hmm. The 41 NDO 11s. Yep. Um, and they also have, we are also going to include the disc brake detail. And uh, that's something we haven't done on the previous front cars, is I'm, am I correct? No, because I think this is one of the first ones that had disc brakes. Yes, yes. Um, or at least the first one that we've modeled correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, the Canadian Pacific cars never had disc brakes originally. Uh, I believe they still don't. I'm not sure if those were retrofitted or not. Mm -hmm. um, but even like the bigger car, like the, uh, the mid-train dome, it never had disc brakes, or at least the model that we did. Nice. Uh, I don't, do you, you don't happen to have the CAD work up there, do you? Uh, if, if, you if not, don't worry about it. We can... Uh... But either way, um, yeah, these uh, these should be uh, these should be neat cars. Uh, Amtrak, especially in the later years, they use them a lot on uh, the East Coast trains. Uh, you'd see them on the Broadway. You'd see them on a lot of the Florida trains. They they did have quite a uh, traveled career. Um, they ran down to like I was saying before uh, the joint NP and uh, sure Missouri Pacific and uh, BNO uh, National Limited. They ran on there until until '64. New York Central used them a lot on the 20th century, all through the Northeast. Uh, they had they had quite the traveled uh, travel careers. Mm -hmm. I've got the drawings here, Jordan. If you want me to yeah. take over, oh, sure. So here's the slumber coach as it stands. Uh, mm -hmm. There's still a couple of corrections that we need to do, um, but looking at the underframe, you can see the full detail. You can also see the wide array of available number boards mm -hmm. uh, in various lengths. Um, uh, oversized water tank, uh, air conditioners, um, you know, and uh, one of the details that we're still updating is uh, is the trucks here. The GSC stamp is being shifted to its correct location, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and you know, the just this great detail on the trucks there. That back under, right there. Mm -hmm. Very much the same. Very much using the same the same way that we did the disc brakes on the uh, Horizon cars. So, and of course, you can see the track powered uh, powered lighting these cars will have. So no no batteries needed for these ones. Oh, and they'll have a they'll have a, a somewhat small capacitor. We're trying to reduce the size because currently the car is equipped with a lot of LEDs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually setting a record for for passenger car for us for a number of SMDs in the board. But. Uh, just flipped around here and then you can see the separate bedrooms mm -hmm. and the individual seats and uh, each bedroom will have its own smd so you can so the entire car will be lit and uh, if you want to customize it like i've done on a couple of my cars you can you can paint out smds so that way you get a couple of dark rooms every once in a while so that's good and there, you, and there you go yeah my wallet's not safe so neither is mine <laughs> There's mine. I'm a Canadian modeler, but at the same time, I, I have an admiration for Amtrak in the early 70s. Yeah. Oh, me too. Of course. As you might know. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard that. Yes. Yes. Well, sorry. Of... Sorry, Bill. There's no O and W slumber coach. Hey, you know. I, Could be. That's all right. I, I've covered myself on this one, so we're we're, we're good now. <laughs> Uh, so here's a related question. Obviously, we know the answer to this, but uh, any VIA slumber coaches? And I guess why why didn't they purchase any? Um, VIA didn't purchase any because by the time VIA came around, there was no, I don't think Bud was still around making passenger cars. Uh, if they were, they didn't have much time left. Um, and CP didn't get them because I think they realized after they uh, delivered the Canadian 
Um, there was demand. They were thinking of ordering more cars. There is records out there that say they were going to order more, but they just never did. And I think the uh, the U series uh, uh, heavyweights that received all that stainless sheathing uh, that kind of fit that purpose, and they, they lasted until well into the mid '60s before they were finally retired. Yeah, the the, uh, the, the U sleepers were modified heavyweights to look like mm -hmm. uh, the stainless steel cars, and were basically economy sleeper yep. accommodation. Exactly. All right. So why don't we answer maybe one more question? That uh, actually this, this one's actually for Bill. Uh, do we have a status update on the northeastern caboose? Is that uh, is that in tooling now? Not quite in tooling yet. Uh, the factory sent me a next to final CAD. There's still one or two corrections that they've missed, so we need to uh, get those done, and then it's ready. So it's going to slot in very quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. We got somebody asking here if the slumber coaches will have the HEP details. Uh, we, we actually had this discussion. Uh, we, we'd like to, but uh, unfortunately, it would require an all new underbody, all new ends. I mean, if, if we get orders for many, many, many cars, and I mean, if the orders actually show up, then we'll, we'll obviously, we'd like to, but uh, for the, the cost of basically tooling half of a new car, um, just for that one road number or, or road name, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough call. So yeah, based on the number of cars we're expecting to sell in, yeah. and it would only be Amtrak phase three. Yeah. So. And, and enough change. It was, there were significant enough changes that it's not just a case of swapping out a couple boxes and so no, forth. It was, it was, they gutted yeah. everything underneath and built from scratch almost. Yeah. You've got the ends with the, uh, so the ends, they had the marker lights installed, uh, have receptacles, um, so it's a it's 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 a tough call, but uh, that's that's uh, that's how we're going to be doing uh, doing those ones. So I think on that note, we should uh, have a look at the X3 tank cars. So let me bring that up on the screen, and uh, I'll hand it back over to Bill. And this is where my wallet's not safe. So you get you guys have oh, no, Bill, Bill's in trouble. <laughs> yes, this is, this is the most exciting freight car we've ever announced. So. <laughs> so uh, the X3 tank car is one of these cars that uh, if anybody hangs out at the prototype modelers groups or looks at the online forums and so forth, everybody says, I don't understand why somebody doesn't do an X3 tank car. Um, Surprise. Well, yes. And uh, having now designed it, um, I can understand perhaps some of it. Uh, this is a tank car that was probably the most, uh, I think the, the most numerous single class of tank car from like the 1920s into the 1960s, and they lasted uh, well into the 70s and in interchange service. So it's it's amazing how long these cars lasted and how many of them there were. Um, but in many ways, this was the Model T of tank cars in that you could have them in any color as long as like black. And uh, they were primarily all owned by UTLX um, with a few that were leased off from UTLX. But in terms of people that white want bright, flashy paint schemes, this isn't going to be your car. If you model typical trains of the, as I said, anywhere from the 20s to the uh, to the 70s, uh, where you need strings of black tank cars, you need a bunch of these too. Um, I want to thank uh, Steve Heil, who literally wrote the book on UTLX tank cars and uh, kept me on the straight and narrow here designing this thing and pointed out everything that I missed. And uh, I think we've actually come up with a very good design and I'll, I'll be happy to share the CAD with you here in a, in a bit. Sure. Yeah, we'll have a look at the road names um, and then we'll, uh, we'll look at the CAD in a, in a second. Right, so the road names are basically UTLX Black, UTLX Black, UTLX Black. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, they're, uh, we're doing this car through its entire service life, basically. Uh, they were delivered in the early 1920s with the K brake uh, system uh, and one, one let lettering layout um, in the 1930s that lettering layouts were changed, but they still had the K brakes um, starting in the 1940s, late 30s and 40s. Uh, these cars were converted over to AB brakes, which was, as you'll see on the CAD, it was actually a fairly significant conversion. You can scroll on down there, George. Um, so we're doing them with the AB brakes in the uh, 1950s, uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s paint scheme. That paint scheme lasted forever. Products tank car line. This was a, a line that um, 
basically was a subsidiary of UTLX um, that was done so that people didn't think that they were uh, supporting Standard Oil at the time. This was a, a little bit of a political and fighting thing. Um, Atlantic Refining had a few as one of our lease cars. Um, it was 1950s paint again, difference being primarily lettering locations and dates. There's the Atlanta can. There you go. More UTLX, more UTLX, and more UTLX. And you want to scroll up. So uh, here you have a Procore car. Um, these cars did operate in Canada, and quite a few of them were leased in, in, uh, by Procore from UTLX, and then they were given Procore lettering. Um, and then we had a few that got into uh, work train service. So you've got, oh, Eastman Chemical. I'm sorry, I missed that one. Uh, that's again. actually, yeah, that's a neat scheme, actually. It's, uh, yeah, I see there's something, the a little black. something other than just black on it. It's not entirely black. So. Not entirely black. Right. Um, and then uh, we have Seaboard Northern Pacific um, work train cars. And if anybody out there has photos of these in other railroads and work train service, because I'm sure they had them, it's a matter of always, it's tough to find photos. So I uh, would love to, to get some photos. And what, what era would these have been? For? These are, would these be 50s? So the, 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 yeah, these, the, both of those are 60s era cars. Okay. Um, yeah. the, the, the Seaboard and, and the, uh, the, the Northern Pacific, I think is actually late 60s, um, it, just before the BN merger. And of course, uh, undecorated with either brake style. Correct. So yeah, if you want to, um, why not? I'll share the the CAD with you. I'm just going to walk through a quick what we're doing here. Let's see this. So this is the original as built version of the car. A uh, couple things to point out: the this has got the K brake with a single uh, combined reservoir and brake cylinder at the bottom, uh, and one arrangement of brake levers. Uh, it has a handbrake that's mounted onto the end platform on the top and a coupler cut bar that's mounted on top of the uh, deck as well. Ignore this other one for the moment. This is a the factory loves to put everything together. Uh, it has, they'll have the uh, unique UTLX tack boards. The two on the side are missing. This is a still in a progress CAD. You'll also notice walkway on only one side, which was typical of these cars. So if you get one and you think parts are missing, actually, they're not. Um, and then the earlier cars will come with this uh, standard uh, Andrews truck. This is the AB version, a little bit later car. Uh, at this point, they went over to the Bettendorf Castile uh, trucks. The let's hide this so that it's not confusing. They went to an end mounted brake wheel um, and an underslung coupler cut lever. And the AB brakes that used a different variety of uh, brake levers and so forth underneath. And the reservoir below and the AB valve up above. So it's basically a significantly different underframe on this. And of course, these aren't going to have shelf couplers on them. They will have a, uh, our, our standard uh, coupler. Well, the, the factory really loves the shelf coupler design. So no matter how many times I tell them not to put it on the car, it shows up on the CAD work, but they always seem to sort it out in production. So. And that's not even for tank cars too. We'll get box cars and, and anything, locomotives, and we get the, the CAD work done and it's got, uh, it's got shelf couplers on it, so yeah. Our trains won't come uncoupled now, they're very safe. Yes. <laughs> um, the other thing that we're trying to do, and, and we'll, we'll see how this comes out, my factory insists they can do it, is, is to actually have conical rivets on the tank car, which would be a first, because they, uh, uh, if you look at photos of a real tank car, they have these conical rivets, and uh, it's not actually been done before an HO scale, so uh, bear with me, and we'll see how that comes out in the first sample. All right, we'll look forward to it. And uh, when do you think these will go into two? And these were, I think, did Jason mention they're going into two and pretty soon? Yeah, no? um, absolutely. We're uh, essentially ready to, to, to pull the uh, pull the plug on these and let them go. The uh, the only thing I've got to do is clarify that they have the right parts to the right versions. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, like starting next week. Oh, very good. And on that, uh, do we have any plans? I know it's still we're just getting this launch, but any plans down the road to do sixty five hundred or eight thousand gallon? versions of these cars? 
By lots of ten thousands, yes. Um, so um, the sixty five hundred is a little bit more of a challenge because most of those I think were in a shorter uh, length uh, frame, shorter wheelbase. Uh, but there were a number of eight thousand gallon cars that used exactly the same frame. Um, there were also some uh, two two uh, compartment and three compartment tank cars that uh, were were either built new or modified from these again using the same frame and i would love to be able to do the entire series uh, so uh, yes i would love to good start that. so yeah all right so uh that's the tank cars uh why don't we uh do uh maybe do a couple more questions here and then we'll go on to the order deadlines that are coming up this week um this is actually a good one for josh uh, can you just basically give a rundown of the lighting in the Comet cars? Uh, what will be, will that all be controlled with the Rapido lighter? Headlights, marker lights, stitch lights, interior? Yes. Um, all right, I got to think back on this one because it's been a while since I designed that. Um, cause we've, we've made changes along the way. Uh, so the Comet cars, the interior lights are by default on. If you want to turn them off, you wave the lighter over the middle of the car. It'll turn your interior lights off. Uh, marker lights on the end, uh, they're defaulted to off. So you wave the wand and they will toggle uh, into an on state if you want them. The cab car was the tricky one because we hadn't yet developed um, a design for a circuit board yet that would accommodate a decoder. But you're still able to control all the lights on either DC or DCC using the wand. And I believe it's you wave the wand over the cab and you toggle the headlights and ditch lights. And if you wave the wand slightly further back, like where the lit number board is on the side, that is where you would control your end marker lights. So that way you're able to have both. If you wanted to, you could have both on at the same time. You could have none on when you're parking the train. You know, it, it still gives you flexibility for operation. Um, moving forward, we're still working on designs that will accommodate a decoder. And we're hoping to have those working for when we uh, release the bi-level the Bombardier bi-level cars. Mm -hmm. But so far, for the couple of tests we've done, so far, so good. And uh, yeah, I've just got a photo of some of the uh, the samples that we had arrive, uh, I guess it was in August. So we got the Condot coach and the M uh, MTA uh, cab car there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they look gorgeous. Yeah, and they actually roll incredibly well. Uh, when I was photographing these, I had a hard time keeping them to sit still. I mean, they kept rolling away. They, it's the slightest grade on the uh, on the photo booth they would try to roll off. So yeah, that was fun. I'll be it'll be interesting to see um, what customers' uh, abilities are with pulling multiple cars at once. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, on a flat, ten cars should be no problem for a properly weighted locomotive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll maybe we'll get some kind of video up once uh, once the production models arrive. And uh, that's actually not that far away. Do these have now shipped from the factory, as I recall. Uh, yes, they have. Yes, so probably see those probably well before Christmas anyway, probably in November sometime. Um, again, it's as we mentioned before with shipping, it's uh, it's it's kind of a shot in the dark in terms of when they're actually going to arrive. We've had products take two months to get across the ocean, some six weeks, four weeks, five weeks. It's all it's kind of all over the map right now. So, so that is the uh, the comments. Um, so we can get another question here, then we'll go over to the order deadlines. Um, for the X3s, will we be including decals uh, for the placards, or will they be just coming blank, or will that coming, be coming pre-printed from the factory? Um, I haven't decided that yet, to be honest. Um, my guess is we will probably do one placard um, that is uh, pre-printed, pre and then the There'll be decals available. I think there are some out there, and if not, we'll supply some artwork to uh, one of the decal manufacturers and let them uh, do some accessory decals. Okay. Uh, one more X3 question: Is this the early frame design uh, used on the cars built, being built in the 1920s? No, this is the second frame design with the the more or less straight across end sills. They, they, they did vary the the. Uh, uh, the frame design somewhat over the years. So this is this is the, I think, starting in the mid-20s, I think is when this one came in. Okay. And uh, one more question for you, and then we'll, we'll go on to the, uh, the deadlines. Um, 
We have a question here about the FAs, the CNFAs. Someone noticed that uh, in part of the yard they have an M3H, and the other side of the yard has a single chime for, this, for CN. Uh, do you know which horn will be coming on the endings? Is whichever one is most correct, I guess. So. Well, and, and as we do in a lot of things, we'll probably will install one and have the other one in the poly bag, would be my guess. Um, yeah. And uh, I'd have to go back and actually take a look at the photos. But uh, um, a lot of these were, were delivered with just a single chime lat style air horn, the way I've gone with one. And uh, then, of course, got later horns. So um, we'll have some in the poly bag for, for optional horns on most of these engines. For sure. And, and also, of course, keep in mind that everything like all the artwork that we show isn't isn't final artwork we uh and design this is yes. all kind of uh, preliminary and we, we do uh we do try to make as many corrections as we can before they before they go into production yeah just to reinforce that the the, the launch artwork is always done in a bit of a hurry the week before the launch and then we do something like this and say hey so we'll say hey how come one has one horn and one has the other and mm -hmm. we have to go back and fix it so yes Exactly. This is not final production artwork on any of these projects by, by a long stretch. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so if, if anyone does notice anything that they, they want to kind of kind of let us know about, if they see a detail that might not be in the right place, so please feel free to email us. Um, that's the best way of getting in touch. We get some people send Facebook messages or stuff like that. It's, it's really best if you can send us an email and then we can send that off to the, uh, the most appropriate uh, project manager or designer. So uh, on that, let's get into the order deadline. So September 15th, so that's two days away. We've got two uh, uh, diesel order deadlines, two important diesels that are both conditional. So uh, based on how many orders we get at the deadline, that uh, determines whether or not they'll be made. So to start off, we've got the uh, Montreal Locomotive Works FPA, uh, FPA and FPB twos. Uh, we've been talking about this a bit lately. Um, not a very big fleet. There was uh, only a handful, I guess, what is it, two A's and two B's? Yep, right. that's it. Yep, um, CN got them. They went in the, originally came in uh, green. They went in the stripes in the, in the 60s, uh, in the VIA. Uh, VIA's uh, blue and yellow in the, in the late 70s there. Uh, one of them actually still exists. Uh, what, uh, what was the railroad again? Uh, New York and Lake Erie. Erie. Yes, correct. And it's still, still running down there. Mm -hmm. um, these are a conditional announcement. Uh, these and also keep in mind these are not the same as the FPA fours. The FPA fours had different details. They were a later kind of evolution of uh, of these locomotives. Um, but uh, they're an all new shell for both units, and uh, we do need to get those orders. If if we kind of hit that deadline on the fifteenth, and they're really bad or they're not sufficient, we will have to unfortunately cancel this project. Uh, we don't want to, but uh, that's just the reality. We uh, we can't tool a locomotive that. Uh, that, that uh, won't break even, of course. So, yep. and, and if that didn't make you feel guilty enough for not ordering one, watch Jeremy's video with with his menagerie of pets. It's wonderful. Yes, yes. yes. Jeremy just put up his video this afternoon, uh, kind of uh, related to the video I did for the uh, for the H16, which we'll talk about in a second. There, at least uh, Lily behaved in her video. I, I was going to say. He was challenged. He, he tried to do something with a cat on camera. Come on. Yeah, yeah. We, we've seen how that's worked out with some of the uh, some of the stuff. Done, so. Yeah, as I said. Yeah. JRX meat reefers and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest questions we've had regarding the FPA two U's is where did they run? Mm -hmm. um, unlike a lot of prototypes that railroads had, where they would run them for a little bit and then just kind of push them off to the side. Once CN had these rebuilt um, into FPA and FPB two U's, they ran them to the very end. Like they were, they put them regular service alongside the FPA fours and FPB fours. Uh, I've seen photos of FPA two U's leading uh, the Ocean Limited out of Montreal towards Halifax. Uh, I've seen them on uh, corridor trains between Toronto, Montreal, uh, Southwestern Ontario. I've even seen them on the Montreal section of the Canadian mm -hmm. uh, that ran from Montreal west to Sudbury. Yep. So anywhere you saw any of the Alcos running, these would be in there as well. They just ran them as though they were FPA fours, and they lasted into the eighties. Uh, it was about yes. 82, 83, 84, somewhere around there. They were they were finally withdrawn. Uh, via uh, one of the, I believe it was one of the A units uh, was withdrawn in the early eighties. Uh, the other one lasted right to the end, which is now the one that New York and Lake Erie has. Mm -hmm. uh, it was only sidelined when new. Uh, when new motive power restrictions came into effect in Canada where they had to have an updated dead man system. 
Yeah, yeah. The RSC can safety control equipment. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, like they just they ran them. No. Yeah. I wouldn't say they ran them into the ground, but they ran them until they died. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. And uh, as you can see, we've got them in uh, in AD sets, so we've got uh, all the numbers for uh, CN green, and stripes, and uh, in VIA, and they are all available in either DCC sound or a regular DC uh, silent uh, version. So um, if you're interested in these, we we really want to get these made. Uh, so please uh, please go see your dealer, uh, and uh, or, or order them from our website and. Uh, do it soon, like yep. two days. So. And th that photo right there, that was a CM publicity photo for the launch of their new 1961 paint scheme. Yeah. And yep. they use the FPA 2Us. Mm -hmm. And well, an FPB 2U. Yep. And they look fantastic. Very, uh, very nice and shiny and clean, yep. especially for the winter. That, so. Because it was about four miles from the, the shops. Yep. Right yeah. The yeah. Yep. I believe that was Saint Lambert, Quebec. Yes. Yes. All right, so that's the uh, that's the FPA uh, FPA two U's. So the other one, of course, we have. Um, you see that there, the H uh, H sixteen forty fours. This is the other conditional announcement that we've been uh, talking about lately. Um, we had originally launched this project, I think, the beginning of twenty twenty, was it? Somewhere around there, late twenty nineteen. And uh, yeah, we just the orders never really. They never really came in at the time. So we relaunched in June. We added a bunch of new paint schemes. So uh, let me just scroll down here. So we already had CN, uh, CN Green, but we added CN Noodle and we added CP Multimark uh, in four uh, road numbers for each and also the single New Haven in the, uh, the Albert scheme uh, to help boost some of these orders. So we've got Quite a colorful collection of different uh, different road names: the Virginian units, Penn Central, uh, North Fork and Western, uh, all both versions of New Haven. Um, you have to love New Haven for not being able to paint two locomotives alike sometimes. Exactly. Why did they paint that one just like one single unit like that? Is one that paint shop reason? must have liked. I I don't know. I'm sure there's a good reason that the New Haven guys will tell us. But yeah. Yeah. Of course, there's the Milwaukee CP in both the block and the multi mark. And CN Noodle, CN Green, and VNO. And of I course, also like Jordan when you reference colorful paint schemes and then said Penn Central. Penn Central is. Hey, what's wrong with black? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We're doing well with black things. It's very elegant. So. 50 Shades of Black. That's right. <laughs> How many different tank cars are Penn Central units here? Exactly, exactly. And of course, no two H16, uh, or almost no two are alike. Um, each railroad. Which was very typical at the time uh, when they ordered from FM. Uh, each railroad kind of specified different parts and features and details, and every single one was different. And we, we are replicating all of those differences. Yeah. Uh, we've got two different truck styles. You have the trucks that came under the uh, the Canadian CLCs, or the uh, I believe a different one that came under the the, uh, the FM built units in Wisconsin. Um, different horns, bells, grates, and everything. Um, pretty much everything on uh, that's unique to each locomotive we are, we are designing into. But of course, um, it's conditional. We, uh, we're, we're not seeing the numbers yet. They're, they've improved quite a bit. Uh, we're expecting these will do quite well after the deadline, but uh, we need to get those orders in uh, or, or the project uh, is uh, may not, uh, might not go through. I think the, the orders are picking up, but I think one of the most common questions we get is how are the orders going on such and such a project? And honestly, we never know until the day after the deadline and uh, we can predict where we think things are but you know, that's the nature of a deadline people wait until the end to, to get their orders in and we don't tally them until after all the orders are in so yeah. uh, and yeah. one of the big issues is a lot of the dealers and which are the larger orders they'd never submit any information until the day after when they've got their totals okay it's, it's human nature the deadline is such and such a date so i'll wait until that deadline to put every, everything in it makes perfect yep. sense but it makes it difficult for us to sit here and try to predict things so. yeah so we'll, we'll probably have a better idea in a couple of weeks maybe towards the end of september um it's not going to be the day after the order deadline because uh, we we do have the, uh, the the orders team has to sit down and they manually go through every order insert it into the system and then we uh, we, we tally everything up and it, it sometimes can take a couple of weeks Especially right now, because we have so many shipments coming in the door. Um, <laughs> we hope. Yeah, well, there, we, we just had the, uh, 
So the first batch of B36s just came in last week, uh, two weeks ago. The N-Scale FP9As, uh, they, they are actually shipping to distributors and dealers this week. Uh, we're hoping to get that out by Friday to get all the dealers and, uh, and all the orders out. Uh, then we have, oh, I can't, we've got so much stuff coming the next four or five weeks. Uh, HO scale F40s, N scale Comets, N scale Horizons. Uh, what else am I forgetting? We have the F30 flat cars we're going to have a look at, the 100 box cars. Uh, tons of stuff, actually. You mentioned the, you mentioned the X31s, I think. Yeah. Yep, the X31s are, are in transit. Um, yeah. I'm probably forgetting two or three projects, but uh, there's a lot. There's a lot on the way. The big problem we're having with shipping right now is because the ports are so backlogged, and that we're having some of our products transferred to other means to get them shipped across. And just because of all that, some we know that we have some shipments somewhere between our office and the port. Mm -hmm. We just don't know where, and we'll get like a two-day warning. Your, your shipment's going to arrive in two days and it's like everyone scrambles. There's only like 3,500 miles between. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a day trip. It's fine. Yeah, of course. So. <laughs> of course, uh, for, for kind of the full list of everything that's coming, uh, this, uh, I think Dan Garcia just updated this today. So this is the current production and delivery schedule for everything that we have announced. Uh, you can see where every item is in terms of order deadlines. We've actually got the October deadlines we're going to talk about in a minute too. Um, but everything is in transit. So there we go. We've got the Procore GP20 tanks, the Gunderson well cars, the, uh, the American F40s, the X31s, the Comets, uh, the F30 flats. The steam heaters are going to be leaving the factory, I believe, late this month. Um, uh, what else do we have coming in, in the short term? I think everything else is kind of in production, but you can just see how much stuff is, is, is coming before the end of the year or very early in, the, in 2022. And, and this is, I know this, this question gets asked occasionally too about, is this the real schedule? Is this, the, is, do you have a hidden schedule? No, this is the real schedule. This is definitely when things are coming is to the best of our knowledge. We don't have a, any sort of hidden backroom schedule that we oh, need to yeah. So when, whenever somebody, whenever someone emails us and says, when is this coming? Uh, we get this question all the time. You have provided no information on when this product is arriving. Well, we do. It's, it's on the website and it's available 24 seven. So please. Please have a look here. Um, it, it, uh, it, it has the most up-to-date information that we have available. Yeah. I mean, we do have an internal schedule, mm -hmm. but even I find it hard to read sometimes and understand what's coming when. So I just look at this because it's the same information. <laughs> exactly. It's just made a lot simpler to read. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> no, no. It's okay, Bill. We're in this together. All right. <laughs> of course, there's all our N-scale stuff plus our, our vehicles that are, uh, are, are on the yep. way in the next, uh, yep. next few months. So, so that's uh, that's that. Um, I guess we could probably. Oh yes. Uh, so the order deadline is coming up in October. So October fifteenth will be the next batch of order deadlines. We've got the E eight uh, A's and B's, the Auto Flood three coal hoppers, and the kind of uh, the rerun of the uh, Canadian mill gondolas. So I'll have to click on that quickly. Uh, these are new numbers. We we I think the last run we did of these was what two years ago now. Uh, no, it was longer than that. I want to say it was like three or four. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a while, surprisingly, considering we it was actually the Gons was one of the first projects I did at Rapido. Yes, yes. Well, sure. a new run of paint schemes, anyway, not mm -hmm. the original design. I think that was a, a Dan Darnell. Yeah. Um, what do you know about? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> um, Those fighting words. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but um, yeah, and uh, for a lot of these paint schemes, a lot of them are just reruns. Uh, the one thing I will note that we need to update on the website, the artwork, um, if you go up to the to the jumble, yeah, yeah. the artwork for the CN noodle, uh, that was an art, that's actually the incorrect artwork. The noodle is centered vertically on the side of the car. Mm -hmm. um, that that it will be done, I guess, correctly. Some of the very early uh, painted cars, the noodle was shoved up high. And I was going to do that one because we hadn't touched it since the very first run. But due to, I guess, customer demand, uh, it will be centered in the middle of the car correctly. Um, the PGE is an entirely new paint scheme, a uh, black car with um, kind of basic lettering, but the large PGE lettering. Uh -huh. um, in the past, we did the green version. These ones were built uh, much later, uh, fairly late, actually, in the mid to late 60s, I believe. Um, most of the other ones are just new numbers, Ontario Northland. Uh, both versions, TH and B, 
uh, CP rail. Um, the red one is slightly different from previous uh, previous decorations. The lettering is spaced differently within the ribs as per the prototype. Um, it seems it seems they had about three or four different ways of decorating gondolas uh, in the 70s and early 80s. Yeah, probably depends on the day of the week it went through the paint shop. So yeah, and mm -hmm. the CN early ones, the large lettering for the CN delivery scheme. Um, that's a newer number series that we haven't done before. And those cars will also come with a stamp for the Eastern Car Works out of uh, Nova Scotia. Oh, nice. Very nice. Well, that's the gondolas. And again, that's uh, the 15th of October. So another, just a little over a month away for that. Mm -hmm. um, so what was the other one we've got? Uh, let me go back to the delivery schedule here. So the, uh, the Auto Flood 3s. And this is the modern coal hoppers, the rapid discharge coal hoppers, the rapido discharge coal hoppers. Uh, <laughs> I I that uh, we actually have the first samples uh, just arrived. So maybe I could bring those up here. Bear with me a sec. There you go. Can you see that there? Nope. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me try sharing that properly this time. How's that? There we go. This is uh, this is uh, Matt's baby, the uh, the Auto Flood Three modern coal hoppers. These started production, I believe, around two thousand four. They, they first hit the rails around then. High capacity uh, uh, coal hoppers. Some of them were rotary dump. Some of them were were bottom dump, depending on which versions. Um, let's go through the images here. And a lot of them, even if they were bottom dump, they did come equipped with rotary couplers. Yes. Yes. See all the underbody detail there. All the rivets are uh, are on there. And again, for for a first sample, they've actually done quite a nice job. Mm -hmm. um, Separate piping. You can see the cast body. Yep. So, so you don't have to worry floor, about weight. Yep. Whole yep. floor is cast. You got all the interior bracing, all the rivet detail, and we are doing cold loads for these. Uh, you can kind of see. Uh, there's another. There's a nice view, three quarter view of it there. All the rivet detail on the inside. And uh, we'll go back. You can't really see it too well, but there is the the coal load uh, that's not that's not completed. So that's just a, kind of an early early rendering of of. Or not Look, really. Looks a bit like a sand load right now. They just yeah, yeah exactly. They it's, haven't cut the coal texture into. No, it. no, no. That's the Canadian snow load. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So these these are actually turning out to be uh, quite nice. Um, I'm going to just flip back over to the. Uh, to the page there of all the info. And again, you can see all the different uh, paint schemes and road names and numbers we're doing. Um, we're doing a multiple, multiple road numbers. So I think we're doing, what is it, 12, uh, over 18. No, 18, 18? Uh, yeah, a lot of the schemes have 18 numbers available. Yeah, so 18 numbers. Uh, they can be bought individually as well if, uh, if you only want uh, one or two cars here or there. Yep. You can also get uh, six packs of unnumbered cars. Yep. yep. Got the CEFX, uh, GLFX, GGPX. That's the uh, GATX uh, lease cars. So these are pretty much any color you want as long as it's silver. Exactly. Pretty much. They look neat. It's a nice looking car. Go through them here. UP, of course, probably. UP and BNSF will probably be our, our, our biggest sellers as they almost always are. Yeah. And uh, I keep forgetting what all the reporting marks are. So I'm just bringing up the uh, sales pack now. Sure. Do you want to, do you want to share that? Uh, yeah, I can actually. Let me just uh, stop sharing there. Let's go. There's also some extra renders in the sales pack. So nice. So there we go. So there's a couple of renders. You can see the load profile a little bit better, but. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we got BNSF, uh, the CIT group uh, with the CEFX reporting marks. Um, also included in that is the Indiana Railroad two millionth car load special. Now, why would Matt have an Indiana Railroad car? You know what? You're going to have to ask him. <laughs> uh, uh, GLFX, which is the Gulf Power Company. Uh, we got the GATX Corporation for GGPX. Uh, Western Resources for KPLX. Uh, we got Carolina, Carolina Power and Light. 
and uh, Union Pacific. Nice. Yeah. I think those uh, those have already done quite well. The orders have been very very strong for that for that car. Yep. So we're we're pretty happy with it. And of course, you can't just buy one. You got to buy them in. Uh, you got to buy long needed trains of them. So. Yep. <laughs> and these cars will come with our trademark uh, aluminum finish. Yep. Um, we're just finalizing the correct color tint for that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Matt is. Um, so yeah. All right, so that is the uh, nose. Uh, and what else do we have? It was the there was two things. I, um, I believe we have. Oh yes, the E8. Uh, that's knows a lot about those. Uh, do you have some photos of that you want to share? I don't know if you've got them ready to go or not. But... Um, yeah, the ones that, that we put for the newsletter. Yeah. I, I don't have them ready, but I can get them up quickly. Well, either way, uh, while you're doing that, let me just share the page here. Let's show uh, all of the e units. So, yep, this is our uh, E8 project, as we uh, announced back at uh, Christmas of last year. We've got quite a selection of, of uh, road names. Of course, we've got Amtrak Phase 1, the uh, CB&Q. We actually have a couple different versions of those because there's, I think, there was one unit that wasn't painted in the uh, in the stainless. It was kind of gray painted. So we've got uh, different versions of that we're doing. We've got the CP with the high sided uh, maroon band. The later version with the kind of more standard uh, CP uh, block lettered uh, uh, version. Multi mark. The five inch stripes. Superior Lackawanna. Illinois Central. New York Central. Benzie in the uh, five inch or sorry the five stripe scheme, Southern that's the Southern Crescent scheme from the uh, from the seventies, and UP, and oh of course can't forget uh, Via. There's uh, we've got the both the eighteen hundred and the uh, eighteen. Well, they renumbered them when the uh, when CP had their RS eighteen was built. These were renumbered to avoid uh, confusion, as I recall. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's uh, that's uh, an exclusive for Otter Valley. And uh, yes, yeah, so the orders are open for another another month, and then we'll close that out, and we'll put them into production probably right away, starting in uh, in uh, kind of mid fall. So the the uh, let me just to clarify the Amtrak forty three sixteen the special edition unit is actually in production now. Uh, they're starting starting injection and so forth. On um, yeah, if I can share screen here um, again, lots of road specific details um, on these. Um, just for those who've ordered the 4316, this is the box sample the factory sent me. This is the presentation box that the locomotive is coming in. Uh, really nice wood box. Uh, this is a mock-up of the 4316 using a shell that still does not have all the details still on it. So um, this is an early production or early test piece. And uh, oh, where did it go? Where's Dan's? I was, well, we'll stop sharing for a bit. Yeah, we'll stop sharing that for now. <laughs> oh, no, uh, Dan, Dan, is, Dan, so Dan Darnell, what I was going to show you is Dan Darnell's working on the Erie Lackawanna uh, shell that yes. unfortunately didn't quite have finished for the newsletter, but it is looking gorgeous, which is uh, so Thank I get to play with the black ones and he gets the colorful ones. Exactly. But. And we'll, we'll have a video sometime uh, sometime late this month, and maybe depending on, uh, on how that goes, September, early October. We'll have a video out before. Before the order deadline arrives in, uh, in, the, in the middle of next. And just to reiterate what we're doing here, we've got several different uh, body styles with different MU uh, configurations on the nose, different uh, back ends on the units, different uh, dynamic brake hatches, um, different steam generator hatches, different porthole uh, inserts. Uh, so it's uh, really a bit of a Mr. Potato Head in terms of being able to do all sorts of different parts combinations to come up with a uh, uh, road specific unit. And um, that's what we're doing. We've got a lot of, lot of different molds that are going into this project to make it work. And uh, speaking of the E8, so I'm, I've got a question here about the VA units. Uh, all of the VA units will have operating ditch lights? Is that yes, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yes, the only one that has ditch lights. Yes, yes. And also uh, number 1800, which was a uh, originally CP unit then went to uh, went to via um, somewhere along the line, the shop reversed the portholes on the, uh, the side panel. So we also have just for that one unit, we've tooled up a special uh, side panel with the reversed portals. Very nice. All right, so maybe we'll have a look at some of the other uh, kind of samples or models we have coming in, and then we'll do some more questions in, uh, in a couple minutes there. So first off, what do we got here? Let's look at the uh, look at the Procore 5820 plastic pellet hopper. So bring that up. Again, this is our first sample. It just actually arrived not even a week ago, right on Thursday. So pretty good, again, for a pre-production sample. We're, we're really happy to see how this turned out. Couple of small things that need to be adjusted still, but uh, but it's looking really good. Um, these are essential for any kind of plastic pellet service from the late seventies. They're still on the rails now, um, and you'll quite often see them in groups, uh, sometimes several cars at a time. So uh, one of those cars you can justify getting uh, getting multiples of. See all the etching on the roof there. Let's scroll through some some of the other pictures here. Looking at the other end, you've got uh, the underbody. Uh, this doesn't have all of the detail on it. There's still a few details that are, are, are yet to be added, but you can see the grate detail. Uh, we've got multiple, I think it's two different styles of grate and three different styles of hatch, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct. And Something see. else to point out that we're doing on the freight cars, which we haven't mentioned tonight, is that the coupler boxes on all of our current freight cars are designed for semi-scale couplers. Yes. Um, and uh, so they'll, they, they will take uh, our own semi-scale, which is on here, KD-158, uh, KD-58, any, any of those couplers are dropping. Yep, absolutely. So we've got, that's the Procore 5820. We haven't set an order deadline on that yet. That'll probably be happening before the end of the year though. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Again, there's a couple of uh, uh, corrections that still need to be done on these cars, but pretty good for a, for a first sample. We're really, really impressed with how that turned out. So other cars that we have in, uh, this, one's, this one's actually uh, one of your, another one of yours, Bill, the uh, PRR F30 class black cars. Yes, indeed. These are actually production models. We just received these samples again just a, a few days ago, just late last week. There's PRR. We have several different versions of PRR. That's the late, late Pansy that just prior to Penn Central. Yeah. I think your color, your colors are shifted a little bit here. Yeah, this is it's uh, some of them are different brightness. So I think these are just the uh, kind of the raw images. So they're not yep. uh, yeah. This is the 1950s Pansy. Mm -hmm. More of a reddish. And the as delivered pencil yeah. and Lehigh Valley, which is actually dark red. It's not. Yeah, the uh, colors, the, the, the photos don't kind of accurately represent. I, we've not had a chance to adjust the, adjust these and touch them up yet. Yeah, exactly. But this is good. Penn Central, of course. Same comment on the green. Shows you how the different it looks depending on the light. So, yeah. Connor LOW. Uh, these actually uh, lasted, I think NS still has some of these in service. As I recall, and uh, surprisingly enough, BNSF are using them in Thai service. Uh, which is... there, there was one sitting across uh, from the Big E in Springfield for the longest time in the, in the freight yard, yep. right across the road there in Massachusetts. Uh, Pensy truck train with the uh, initial Pensy piggyback service with the uh, the side rails, mm -hmm. not side rail. Uh, the TTX with the uh, trailer hitch and, and the modified side rails. Yep. And the, the Tuscan Red. It's a, a 50s and 60s car. And of course, the uh, the NS ones are being used as camp cars, not the former Conrail cars. Right. Another view of the uh, Penzi. The trailer train. Mm -hmm. Late trailer train. Late trailer. And just, just in the late 80s. They did. Mm -hmm. And just, just to point out, we do have uh, etched metal panels that go along with these cars that have all of the uh, the Cots lube plates, which are, are designed to be installed by the, uh, by the consumer. Yep. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. It's all the end detail. And these cars, of course, we've mentioned this before, these are, are die cast. So the, the, the body is die cast and all of the uh, decking 
inserts are, are die cast parts as well, as I recall. Is that that's correct? Absolutely. They're, they're yep, and they, they they track beautifully. Do you, do you have one of the your, one of those photos that shows the underbody a little bit on it? Because uh, I think I've got some. There we go. There you go. It, it, so these cars actually had a one piece cast underframe that was done by General Steel Castings, and they had these big see through uh, opera windows on the on the center sills to save some weight and. Uh, we were able to incorporate that in the design too, which was kind of proud. There's another view of the underbody. Interesting, uh, interesting how they did the uh, kind of that center cell. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Yes, yes. Because it's kind of just the design of it. It's it's really neat. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, we had we had some photographs of, of just the raw casting hanging on it on the crane, which was just so neat. It was something that really wanted to capture with them all. and those are those are actually on, on their way right now so that's one of the one of the many shipments that's somewhere between here and uh and and china so they're they're on the water or they could even i don't think they, they haven't landed yet but uh, we'll probably see those sometime in uh, maybe end of october early november and uh, one more uh kind of batch of samples that we've uh, that we've received um is the uh PC and FB 100 box cars, B140 class box cars. These were all built for SP. Um, I'm pretty excited about these myself. We've, we've done a lot of work to uh, kind of a lot of revisions on these to make them more accurate. Uh, of course, we've got the Golden West cars here. These were an early, mid, early to mid 90s repaint and rebuild. Let me see if I can scroll through them. It's going to let me. There we go. Full underbody detail, you can see all the hybrid cushion details on there. Side view. There's the SP cars. Uh, these were how they were delivered in uh, around 76, late 76. Um, on these cars as well, we are including, they're not shown in the photo, but uh, the ACI labels will are being included in the poly bag. Uh, they're actually um, kind of painted on a brass plaque, so you can just install those on the car separately. They are coming with them. Scroll through those quickly. A look at the roof there. Yeah, uh, faded out uh, Golden West patch cars. So these actually got repatched for SP in, uh, in I guess the 2000s after the merger. Again, these this photo doesn't quite show the blue correctly. It's looking a little bit a uh, little bit more baby blue. It's it's not. It's a little more faded out than that. Um, the blue is a, it doesn't quite look correct in the photo there. And all the detail. Just quickly run through these. We've got the uh, Columbus and Greenville. What's hard to see on those Columbus and Greenville cars? There's actually a bit of a shadow effect around the old SP lettering. Yes, you can kind of see it there. Uh, it was interesting to reproduce that because every single car was a little bit different. Yeah. But uh, you can kind of see the shadow effect. Um, it lo it looks a lot, it's a lot easier to see in person. It's just yeah. the way the coloring is in the photo. Yeah, difficult lighting when we, uh, when we took these. So. That's a neat touch. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the Amtrak, uh, Amtrak Base 4. Again, we've got a lot of unique details on these. So we've got Amtrak had when they were when these were rebuilt, they got a uh, a door wheel to replace the door handle. They lost the uh, so the the hydro cushion underframe were actually welded in place, and they added struts on the trucks for high speed service or higher speed service. It wasn't necessarily always reliable, but um, but those were the modifications they did, and we've included them. Uh, we've also got. You can see the end of the car, the close up of the side. There's the underbody. Now, yeah, they, they did uh, take off the hydro cushion, uh, kind of just the little cylinder device there. We left that in the poly bag if you really want it on there. Uh, you can put it on there if you want. You can see the separate door track, the uh, door is the end of the car. Got the green. This was supposed to kind of represent the uh, Railway Express Agency green. Um, these are repainted after a couple of years into the uh, into the silver face for paint. My understanding is they were supposed to actually get a, a new logo for it was yeah. like Amtrak Express Agency or something like that, but it didn't it didn't go through. Mm -hmm. And we did include the end of train device bracket. Uh, we didn't do the end of train device, I think, uh, but that would be pretty easy if you just want to make a little block, paint it yellow and put it on the end there, just a piece of styrene. 
So uh, or, for, or there's there's a lot of options out there for working ones as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's cat detail castings available, which all sorts of options. Yeah. Yep. There's the Amtrak cars, and these are available in three numbers of each paint scheme. So we got uh, individual cars where you can buy them in three packs. So yeah, that's uh, these are pretty exciting. There's a another view of the uh, the strut we've added for uh, the Amtrak cars. All right. Well, we're sharing pictures of stuff that's coming or imminent. I'm going to uh, take over here for just a second, show the X31As. Mm -hmm. This is uh, these are actually due very shortly, right? I think they're on the way to the warehouse. Yeah, uh, there's. I think they're somewhere between here and Vancouver and the Pacific Ocean. And they're, they're, they're somewhere in the Great White North, I think. Yes. Um, so this is the, these are actually production cars, less couplers. They sent me samples without couplers on them, but uh, this is the uh, the Pensy Circle Keystone car. Some things to point out is we actually did represent an overlapping seam on the sides, uh, overlapping seams on the side for the side sheets. Uh, the full underbody detail is as would be expected. Pensy Transverse Reservoir. Uh, it's the double door automobile car. Double door in the standard uh, circle keystone scheme, and this in the later uh, 1960s simplified keystone scheme, and then the shadow keystone, which we actually have in a couple different versions, uh, depending on the lettering. This is the, the one they call the calendar lettering, because it's a little bit different uh, lettering arrangement on it. This is the early Ajax brake wheel, which is on some of the cars, and then the later, which I believe is the quick uh, wheel uh, for. These cars got random brake wheel assignments. So uh, rather than try to figure out exactly what wheel came on, on which car, we've installed one and put the other in the poly bag for you. So you've got your option to modify the car. Yep. All right, and, uh, we've got a couple of people asking for more comment photos. So I'll see if I can bring up a couple, uh, couple more shots here. Uh, keep in mind these aren't final production models so uh they're not necessarily exactly the way the final ones are but they're pretty close so let's just let me bring this up here it's the nj transit coach and you can see the uh those really neat uh inside bearing trucks uh this is uh josh did uh you did a lot of work on this is your product wasn't it mostly yes it was yeah. that alongside the horizons mm -hmm. Different view there, it's the other end of the car. Our end, it's the other half receptacles, couple of cut bars, stuff like that. Got that neat kind of tubular uh, diaphragm, marker lights. That, that was one of the cars that had an unusual lean to it. Just disregard that. We discovered there was a bit of flashing on one of the trucks. Yes, yes. There's the Condot, uh, close up of the Condot car. Huh. Those have turned out really nicely. There was a lot of colors in that logo. Oh yeah, and a lot of colors we omitted from the logo. Mm -hmm. Even with all the emergency think, and the safety uh, diagrams there. I think all told, there's supposed to be nine colors in the in the state seal logo. It is, it is a ridiculously complicated. Yeah. Logo I think we I think we got it down to four. Yeah, yeah. All the warning labels, SEPTA. SEPTA. Yeah. SEPTA came out a lot nicer than I was than I was expecting because of that gray band. Yes, it, yeah, it's really it's is. really hard to match a solid color with our stainless finish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, aluminum finish. Sorry. Yeah. The other car, you can see all the uh, we've done all the warning placards and all the, the very tiny detail or the very tiny lettering. I'm not sure if it's even legible, but you can kind of see them on the, the side of the car there. All the emergency mm -hmm. access uh, lettering on there. That was, the lettering on the septic cars was very difficult to acquire. Um, it actually came down to sourcing videos uh, of trains, like just real fan videos. And we found one where a train stopped right beside the person in the station. And off, like out of, almost out of focus, you could see all the labels beside the door legibly. Mm -hmm. So to the, to the random rail fan in the Philadelphia area, we thank you. Review <laughs> of it there. Wow. They can really see if I can zoom in there. It's a bit fuzzy, but yet for entry, uh, something, 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 emergency access. You probably know what that actually says, but. <laughs> break glass. It's, it's something about the break glass or, or remove this seal or something. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. with the other labels down by the steps. 
Then the instructions by the door release. A little bit of a brighter photo. You can see the interior seats as well. Mm -hmm. And yep, and of course, uh, full interior, uh, full lighting. Do you have a photo showing the interior? I don't think so. I've, I, we've shared them on Facebook a couple of times before. Yeah. So for a lot of the cars, it is it, we have been able to replicate uh, the correct two-tone seating, the kind of the burgundy and the blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's a bit fuzzy, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, these interiors are definitely not a uh, inject one piece injected one color interior. No, every you, uh, every you definitely see all the details, especially with the lights on. Yeah, every factory would exactly. have liked it much better that way, but they're not. Yeah. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> not sure if I have any of the other uh, other photos here. I should double check. I've, I've I've actually got a few years since we're having so much fun sharing. Sure. These came in from the factory this morning. Um, Oh, the GLA is some production work going on at, at one of our factories on the GLA hoppers, mm -hmm. uh, Pensy Circle Keystone cars. I'll le just leave that one there for a minute. Uh, Cambrian, Indiana, Pensy Shadow Keystone, and this will be a Westmoreland car. So these are at Lehigh Valley. So uh, yeah, these are these are in production and uh, moving along pretty well. All right, um, it's time for some more questions. I know we've been looking at uh, pre-production samples for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> um, one for Josh, Comet car trucks, are they going to be available separately? At this time, no. Um, our, our trucks are, I, I know what most people are asking, it's probably to retrofit onto uh, other manufacturers and fleet cars. We have had that question before. Uh, they are not the same truck. They are also not even the same wheel size. So, no. <laughs> but we did do we did do the Horizon truck separately though. So that's uh, that we actually have in stock right now. That's right, we did too. Yeah, those all the, the Horizon trucks also are the same trucks used under Superliner. So, if you have Superliner cars that don't roll as nice, you can even throw them under there. Exactly. Um. Bill, any idea when we might be ready to launch the H-1B? We've already basically told people we're doing it. We've shown it. Yeah, the, uh, the factory is well along on the design of it. Um, honestly, it, with the E-8 and the PA and several other projects that are in urgent production right now, the H-1B has been sidelined a bit until I get back to it, but uh, it will be fairly soon, I would hope. Nice. And the slumber coach question. Now that you're making a slumber coach, does that mean an E60 is coming next? Uh, no, it means an RDC4 is coming next. No, just kidding, okay. uh, just kidding okay. on that one. <laughs> Hold on, I think that question was from Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was. Somebody put something in the newsletter about an E60. I will have yeah, to talk no. to that guy. Yeah. No, uh, the E60 is not next. Uh, whatever that half built version is of a GG1 that was used as a shop switcher, we're going to do that next. The GG1 half, yes. Yeah, the GG1 half. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it actually like two thirds. I think they only cut the, the front end of it off. But yeah. Either way. It's a horrible thing to do. do yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got a question about X72s and how they're coming along. They are in production right now. Um, they are. Do some updating on the artwork and stuff like that. Uh, so they uh, they went into production as soon as the B100s kind of wrapped up. The X72s, I think, are, are starting up now. So. Well, and they've, they've asked for production or for instructions and boxes. So that means that, like Josh was saying earlier, that's how we know that they're really serious about stuff. So. That's always a good sign. Yeah. Right. Um, when are you going to make everything in N scale? Everything in N scale or everything that we've announced? Pretty much. The first model will be an E60, yes. just for Bobby. We, uh, we, we actually do have some, some interesting N scale stuff. Um, we actually have a few different models kind of in, in development right now. Yes, for, uh, I've got two in development myself. Yep, yep. And, I think in total there's four or five and it, it's, yeah. Yep. Yep. So hopefully we'll have something to announce before, before maybe one or two things before the end of the year yep. we'll see how that goes yeah. at least one of the ones i'm working on will knock everyone's socks off hopefully oh yeah, yeah. 
Um, any interest in doing a 10-6, a bud 10-6 is a follow-up to the slumber coach. 10-6s uh, were everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's been tossed around a couple of times, but let, mm -hmm. let's see how the slumber coach does. Yep, exactly. And we'll, and we'll just approach it mm -hmm. from then on. A question about the barrel ore cars. So how are they going along? Um, they're actually pretty far along in production too. I think Dan was saying something about they were in painting, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the last last I remember is he was approving colors, and that was a couple yeah. of weeks ago. So yeah, I think we're another another good sign that they aren't too far off. Uh, do you ever think you'll rerun the LRC locomotives? Probably not. They they uh, the, the tooling for that is pretty. It's pretty rough. It's yeah. dated. Um, there's also a lot of design elements that went into the LRC that we no longer do anymore. Um, just the way we do body construction and uh, motor design and all that, it would it would definitely have to be a from the ground up re redesign. So it's it's not likely, unfortunately. I never got one. Uh, circling back to the kind of to the slumber coaches um, and actually kind of about dining cars, our head end power Amtrak diners too specialized. Uh, we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. With the slumber coach um the, the big problem with as much as we love to do that uh there is so much new tooling required mm -hmm. um complete underbody brand new ends new lighting for the markers and stuff like that uh, I'm, I'm all for them but it's uh it's can you can you sell enough to actually break even or make money on it so that's... yeah i mean it, it's not like the older industry of brass models where mm -hmm. you do a run of maybe 200 and that was it yeah um 200 cars and the price of a car is 850 dollars yeah it's yeah yeah i mean mm -hmm. i'm sure we could justify it if we applied like a, a really high premium to something like that but the guarantee of them selling it would probably be really low yeah yeah um yeah, it's, it's when you, it's, I think I've, one thing I find with the industry is you're now getting into a lot of the more niche models mm -hmm. that have never been seen before or never been thought of. And yeah. you're now eclipsing on an area where it's like, if you do it, you know, it's, can it sell or will it not sell? Mm -hmm. oh. And it, it is something that seems to come up with every car we do is can we do to have version of it? And, you know, is it, is it practical or not? And I think it, it, we're still looking at it at a case by case basis, but in, in most cases, it's just not, not been practical from a cost effect, you know, cost effective standpoint. And we did that with the, a lot of the via bud cars, um, mm -hmm. the, the skylines, the park cars over, over the last several years where we did them in the modern paint schemes because um, it was just to, to retool even just individual cars for the HEP underbodies would, would it would just make them uneconomical. So mm -hmm. it's unfortunate, but it's just, it's just the, the way, the way things are. So, yeah. yeah, we were able to do it with things like the N scale Canadian. Yes. Um, and to HEP end details because it's molded at, like by and large, the body shell is molded as one piece. Yeah. Yeah. And with N scale, you can cut some corners within a reason. Mm -hmm. Whereas in HO, it's it's a lot harder to get away with. Yeah, so it's we'd we'd rather do it right rather than kind of a, I guess a half and half. Mm -hmm. We've got our, uh, our our monthly request for a GP40 TC. Only one this month though, so I'm sure that I'm sure we'll get a few after that. But yep. But yes. Let's see if I've got any more questions here. Let's wait for, for Bobby to filter some out. Um, actually, here's a question for Bill. On the CN FA1s, are we doing the later crosswise exhaust stack? I guess, is that the difference between the... Uh... Right, we're, on all of the FA1s, we're offering both exhaust stacks. Um, we will have one, there, it's a clip-in hatch. Um, so the delivery one in that case would probably be installed in the model and the crosswise one in the poly bag and the parts bag. And again, it's just, it's a little clip in part. So it's a matter of just popping the one out and replacing it with the other. Most of the roads did not change the paint scheme when they changed the exhaust stack. So that's, that's the easiest, easiest way to do it. So we would do that across the board. Yeah. And of course we'll, we'll have a look at that, um, on a, on a, on a, on a, ro a road name by road name basis when we, uh, right. when we're sorting things out here. If, if they got both, we would include both in the end of it. Yep. That's fine. Uh, for Josh, um, based on the success of the Comets, 
in HO and in NScale, I guess. Uh, do you see a future for other versions of comic cars, threes, fours, et cetera? Yes. Um, the design of the, the design of the tooling does take into account the later versions, which had the middle high level door. Um, I'd love to do those. Uh, if there's demand, I'd love to touch on the original Comet cars, which when they were built, they didn't really have the Comet nickname yet. Mm -hmm. um, those were the, the very early Pullman built ones for Erie Lackawanna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there, there, there's definitely legs with the project. Um, I'd even like to do a rerun of the current cars at some point in the not too distant future with some of the as delivered paint schemes. Absolutely. Maybe even, maybe in some, some of the more unusual paint schemes too that have never uh, been done before. Speaking of, speaking of the original comets, um, uh, you might be familiar with this, uh, Josh. So this is a couple of, this is the 2019. <laughs> uh, uh, Josh was, uh, we were down at the Whitney Railroad Museum. This was, this was, uh, this was the turbo liner. It was a turbo liner trip. And uh, just, just before COVID, not much, but just before, and uh, you're showing your, your expert measuring skills. I mean, if you look at the models, my skills are amazing. Yes. Uh, you're, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that car there that we were measuring, that's one of the original Pullman built uh, commuter cars with the low door, mm -hmm. the different, the different end detailing uh, markers. So, I mean, we have measurements, you know, it's just a matter of if the demand is there and if we decide to do it. And we're going to trust that uh, your measurements are accurate based on how these pictures turn out. You have to zoom in and actually look at the tape measure. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, they'll be accurate except for the one photo I took of a tape measure and the sun glare was off of it at a perfect angle. You couldn't see any measurements on it. Exactly, exactly. Live and learn. All right. Well, do we have any other, any other interesting questions? Let's see if Bobby can come through with any here. Is there more, more, more requests for GB40 TCs? Of course, uh, you, opened, you opened up that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any idea when the uh, when the H6 might possibly be looked at again? Is that going to be after the D10? Well, at least consider restarting that. Possibly, yeah. I mean, personally, I'd like to see the project happen, but this is another one where, I'm, for reasons that are completely unknown to me, where the CP guys seem to order the D10s and been in, in huge numbers, and the H6 didn't. Uh, mm -hmm didn't garner the same support. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that after the D10s out there and people see what we're doing with it, which by the way, the samples are, are looking great now. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, the, 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 there'd be more interest in the H6 again. And then I certainly would like to revisit. And uh, speaking of the D10, we, we are waiting on a new sample. Uh, so hopefully we can do a video on that. Well, as soon as we can, we'd like to really close the order book on that, on that project and get it into production. Yeah. Um, it will probably at this point, not exactly sure when the link delivery is going to be, maybe mid next year, just as a very, very vague kind of idea. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll hopefully have some news in the next month or two. It all depends on the next sample, which is if, they, if they've addressed a couple of things that, that Mohan and I had on it, and Dan, uh, and we're good to go. Yep. Um, another one for, for Josh. Uh, do you have an update on the, uh, they're doing some revisions on the RTLs. Do you know, uh, have you heard from the factory about that? So the latest on that is uh, there is a delay in getting the, in getting the, the parts uh, modified and retooled. Um, a lot of the changes are fairly minor, but it's just, it's getting everything accurate. And once that's done, we'll do a final injection to make sure everything is, is ready to go. And then production can start and we can set the deadline. And they were working on at least a partially painted sample just to make things a little easier on our end, I think. Yes, uh, we're going to get, we're going to get, we're, we're actually going to try to get it painted basic Amtrak colors. Mm -hmm. So we can at least, you know, show what the final sample is going to look like mostly. Yes, yes. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for that one, even though I have no, no real connection to the turbo liner. Mm -hmm. You do. We do now. So I do now, yeah. You, you I, helped bro me. I, I broke it. You, you helped me break it. I still have to. I still have to to, uh, to print off and, and frame that uh, that photo from uh, from Matt. So you got to you got to print the photo and then you got to frame that that notice from Amtrak for the damages. 
Yes, exactly. Sarcastically. Like it, it wasn't a legit bill for damages. But we're, we're, we're going to pay them in, in, in turbo liners, ATO turbo liners. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we'll do one or two more questions, and I think we'll, we're almost ready to wrap it up. We're over an hour and a half now. So. Um, any, any future for park cars or skyline cars? Maybe for a new run. It's been a while since we've done park cars, but that tooling is... Uh, is yeah, park, car, park cars might need a redesign of, of sorts, much like we did with the, the Skyline. Yeah. Um, another one of Skylines, it's possible. Um, I mean, there's there's definitely some some more options we can do for that, maybe some mm -hmm. fantasy schemes of sorts, or even just even just more of CPs and Vias. Yeah, absolutely. You never have too many Skyline cars. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got a question about the Fruhoff trailers. I think you were involved with that, Bill. Has there been any movement in the tooling on that? I know we've, we've yeah, been um, how's that one. Yeah, Matt, Matt's pretty much taken that one over. But uh, yeah, I believe that we're, uh, if not in tooling, ready to go to tool around that. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of on a not quite related note, uh, what about the county cars? Uh, those honestly uh, are very, very close to being ready for tooling. But again, unfortunately, they're they're on the list of things I've got to get to after uh, PAs and EAs. So um, that will be shortly. All right. Well, I think we've uh, we've done pretty good tonight. So we're going in an hour forty minutes. So I think that's uh, probably a good place to wrap it up for now. So, all right. So I guess that's about it. So um, just thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll we'll uh, be uploading this to, well, it'll be available on Facebook if you want to watch from the beginning. Uh, we'll have that on Facebook uh, probably in a few minutes. And then on uh, YouTube, probably tomorrow, we will upload the entire live stream to YouTube in uh, probably sometime in the afternoon. So you can watch it there as well. And we'll be back in October, probably around the same time for, uh, for another live stream. I do have Thanksgiving, a Canadian Thanksgiving coming up, I guess, on the 11th. So we'll, we'll see how that fits into the, uh, into the schedule. And uh, we've got some more new stuff to announce. So we will, uh, we will see you then. So I guess, um, once again, thanks, uh, thanks for joining me. And we will see you later. Okay, take care. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.